Well, ladies, going on everybody, and welcome back to the See You Off YouTube channel. You join me for a bit of a different video here on the channel. But listen to Paul Simpson in his interview before the shoes for game. He was talking about creating a squad for next year. You know, he he's got the budget in place. They're trying to start the recruitment early of who they want to sign, and it's his first summer window under um, the Paquette family. Assuming he's still in charge, which which I imagine he will be, um. So I just thought, why not give my opinion on who I would keep, who I would try and sign from them law deal, who I would loan out, who's getting released, sold slash contract expires, so they're a free agent, and who am I sending back to their parents club? Now, well, first we do actually have the main man himself, Paul Simpson. Now, for me, Paul Simpson is the man in League Two for us. Now. I know that's going to split opinion, I know it's, it's split opinion, oh yeah, and as I'm speaking, there is still nine games to go in League One, um, so, you know, we, we we could be 20th by the time, no, I'm joking, obviously not, we are we are getting relegated, but um, if Paul Simpson is still in charge, for me, he's the man to get us out of League Two, what I would say is, if we don't start the season where we're expecting to be, now for me, I think we should be going into this as a top half of the table team. I think that we do have some players that are proven League 2 players and have proven that they can do a very good job in League 2 and that they should be in at least the top half of the table, in my opinion. If if we're not there, and this form from League One continues into League Two, we have a poor summer window, and our first month or first two months are poor. Then questions should be being asked. But for now, I am happy with Paul Simpson in charge, but that could turn very quickly depending on how we start our League Two season and how the recruitment goes in the summer. Now that he said that he's you know, he's got the budget, he's starting to look at the recruitment already. We're in March and he wants League One. He said he wants League One players. We've got months to get this now. We've got months to get the recruitment right and to start. And then when we go into League Two, we can start it properly. If we can't, questions to be asked. Moving into the players then, we've got Max Kilby up first. I would I would loan him back out again. Um I, I think the experience is good for him uh to, to to be loaned out. I'd like him to go to maybe a higher level if possible. Um and to get some more experience. But yeah, Max Kilby is in the loan section for me. Now these players are in no particular order, it's just how they um you know, maybe I'd go positions, but these are just how they were were formatted into the this table. And next up, we've got Jaden Harris. F for me, uh, he, he's either going to get loaned out again, or he's not going to play. And it, it it's quite simple. He obviously got loaned out at the start of uh, of this season at Eastley. Uh, apparently, there was a few offers for him in January. We didn't take them, and then he hasn't played for us since. In fact, um, I actually seen him in Asda um, before the shoes were game. wasn't even in the squad or anything. So for for me, the Jaden Harris thing is it, it's it's the sell. I I don't see him being involved in our team going forward. And um, I think we've got better options in the midfield. I think we've got lots of better options in the midfield to be honest. Um, and it's either going to be a loan deal or um, you know he's going to be sold on somewhere else. I I don't see him getting in this team to be perfectly honest. Next up is Harrison Neal. Um, absolutely bang on to keep. I think he's been one of the shining lights since signing in January. He's only had one poor game and that was against Shrewsbury. It wasn't exactly an awful game from himself, but he always gives a hundred percent. Loves a slide tackle. You know he he started to create a really good picture of himself with the fan base as well. Um. And yeah, for, for me to keep 100%, there's no question about it for Harrison Neal. Jockel Anderson is returned to Reading uh, at the first opportunity you get, send him back. Um, obviously, he, he came in as a number two. He then got the, opp the opportunity as a number one, and that didn't go very well when he was in the team. And then he got injured. And then he came back from injury and he got injured again. So it hasn't been a very good loan deal. It hasn't really worked out at all. So for me, get it back to Reading. You know, it, it hasn't worked out. Good luck to you. But 
back to your parent club. Next up is Alfie McCarmon. Now, Alfie McCarmon, um, obviously signed on a two-year deal. Um, so he'll have one year left of his contract. I do think he's a player that Paul Simpson will want to keep. Um, I don't think he's going to be first, like a starter in the team. Uh, I do think he, he, he brings that opportunity off the bench. Um, as we've seen a couple of times this season against Reading, he was very lively off the bench. And I do think he will be in that sort of, um, you know, substitute capacity. But I, I'd, I think I'd keep Alfie McCarmont, um, and then if it hasn't worked out at the end of this season, then you move on from there. But yeah, I, I would keep Alfie McCarmont there. Next up is Jack Robinson, exactly the same position. A year left on his contract. Um, if if I am, um, if if, if I'm correct with that, I'm sure they both signed two year deals. And, you know, you've seen he's very good at set pieces. You know, his delivery from set pieces is normally quite decent. Um, it, It's a question of if he starts or not um, at left back, left wing back. Yeah, obviously, there's been the competition with Jack Harmer, which we'll get into in a minute. But for me, again, it's, it's one then where you're keeping and if it doesn't work out this season, then, you know, you, you reassess that at the end of the season. Um, but I, I do think Jack Jack Robinson will be in that keep section. Next up is Thomas Hawley. Um, with his contract running out in July, I, I don't see him staying, to be honest. Um, I think Thomas Hawley wants to be a league, uh, a league starter. He wants to start for, for a team. Um, I personally think he's a good League 2 goalkeeper. Um, and I know some people won't, won't be happy with that and will be upset with that comment. He kept 20... 20 plus clean sheets for us in League 2 saved the penalty in the playoff final he's proven to us as a fan base he can do it in League 2 um, yes he's got a mistake in him I, I won't deny that but for me Thomas Hawley is a, a good League 2 goalkeeper and, and, and you know I can see him going elsewhere in League 2 or top end of the National League and, and becoming a first choice goalkeeper um, and I, I do think that's something that he want to do you know Um He's our third choice at the minute behind Breeze and Harry Lewis. I just don't think he would be happy with that, to be fair. His contract's up. Um, I think he'll leave on the free transfer, get some League 2 football or high-end National League. But I, I could I could see him staying in League 2, but I can't see him staying with Carlisle United. And then up next is Harry Lewis. Um, it's a long-term sign and, you know, he's obviously going to be kept. And the you know it's the same with Harrison Neal, same with like Luke Armstrong and some players that are going to come up in the in the next bit. Um, Harry Lewis has been brought in as a project with us, like as part of this the the project, um, and yeah, he, he will be kept. Um, for me, I'd like to see another goalkeeper come in and be able to give good competition, um, to Harry Lewis, um, and that can maybe boost his you know his confidence and his. I'm trying to think of the words here. I mean, boost his performances potentially is what I'm trying to say. Um, he hasn't had the best start in the Carlisle show, which is probably just a lack of confidence. But if he can get someone in that you know he starts to challenge him, then it's going to up his game. It will up the other goalkeeper's game. So for for me to keep, there's no doubt about that. Um, but I would like to see a new goalkeeper come in and, and and really challenge that number one spot with Harry Lewis. Next up is Jack Armour. I think Jack Armour is a keep. I think he's shown that he can do it in League Two. Um, he he's again a good League Two player. Um, I'm not sure how long he's got left on his contract. Um, but I do think Jack Armour will be a a keep. You know, he's been with us a while now. We know what we expect from him. We know what we're gonna get from him in in League Two. Uh, next up is Gabe Breeze. I'm gonna put actually, I'm gonna put Gabe Breeze in the lawn. Um, obviously he's, he's just signed until twenty twenty six with us. Um, I think one day he will be Carlisle United's number one. Um, he came in in December in that very difficult period we were having between Thomas Hawley and Anderson. Uh, he came in for that that four or five game spell and, and was very consistent. To be fair, you know he looked confident. Um, he didn't shy away from from demanding what he wanted on the back line, from controlling it, from from passing it about. He looked he did look really, really comfortable um in between the sticks. For me I'd like to see him get him get a League Two loan or a National League loan. You know, he he was on loan um a few years ago and it it was more of like a a semi professional thing. I'd like to see him go out in a professional capacity at like a a top side in the National League or a, a lower side in League 2 and I think he could be a number one and gain some experience that he's, he's needed in football but for me yeah, Gabe Reese is a loan out um, and I do generally think in a few years he will be Carlisle United's number one uh, Callum Guy 100% keep um, I think losing him this season has been 
a massive loss. I, I not necessarily think he would have been enough to keep us up, but massive loss, Callum Guy, um, this season for sure. Um, and I think him, Harrison Neal, in the midfield, a, a two nailed on starters for us, and I, I think Callum Guy's one hundred percent to keep. No questions asked. Jack Diamond, um, I believe he's out of contract in, in summer, which this is something that Paul Simpson likes to do. You've seen it with McCarmont, you've seen it with Jack Robinson. Get a player in for six months on loan, snap them up in the summer. Um, I, I'd, I, I would have no problem getting Jack Diamond in. Um, on on a free transfer, I believe he's on a free transfer. I've read somewhere that his contract comes to an end with Sunderland in the summer. I might be mistaken, but but what we've seen from him, you know, he's he's shown glimpses glimpses of a very good player. Um, you know, he he's took a while to get back to match fitness. Um, of course he has because he's been out of the game for so long. But when he's got that match fitness and that match sharpness, I think he's going to be a real top player. I think he's going to be a replacement for a certain player that we're going to talk about next. Um. But for me, yeah, Jack Robinson. I don't think you can, Jack Robinson, Jack Diamond. Sorry, I don't think you can go wrong with getting Jack Diamond, um, especially if it's on a free transfer. I think you, you know he, he's got good links within the club with like Luke Armstrong. Um, yeah, for me, I, I would try try and get Jack Diamond in, and as you say, it's that similar thing, isn't it, of a loan deal into a free transfer. Up next is Jordan Gibson. Um, I I, I think Jordan Gibson will leave in summer. I believe his contract is up this summer. Um, there's obviously one way or the other, whichever way you're looking at it. I I, I think that relationship with Simo's gone between the two. You know, he, he's coming on in games with ten minutes to go, um, and he looks lively with them ten minutes to go. But it's not enough for him to to impact the game in any way. Um, he's our top goal scorer at the minute, and yeah, and I, I know how the fans feel about him. You know, the the very it's very split fifty fifty with it all but if yeah for me I think Jordan Gibson will leave I think his time with Carl and I has come to an end Um, I imagine him getting a team in League 2 if not bottom half of League 1 quite easily to be perfectly honest but I, I don't see him being in a Carl United shirt at the end of the season Um, and that, that, that's just how I feel about it to be perfectly honest uh, I, I just think that you know that, that relationship with the manager's gone Um, well it looks like it's gone anyway but yeah, I think Jordan Gibson will move on in the summer um, to, as I say, another League 2 team or a bottom half League 1 side. Up next is Sam Lavelle. Now, this is... It's a difficult one. I I, I think Paul Simpson will keep him, but I wouldn't be against putting him in this section, to be perfectly honest. Um, but, I, I, yeah, I think Paul Simpson will keep him. Um I think Paul Simpson sees him as a leader in the team. He said on numerous occasions that Sam Lavelle picks himself. For me, he doesn't. Um, I don't think he's had a very good season for us at all. He looked good in the first half of the season, but then December onwards, no. Uh, there's been so many games back-to-back when he's made mistakes that have led to a goal. Um, but I do think Paul Simpson will keep him, to be perfectly honest. Um, as I say... I wouldn't be I would wouldn't be against that section, but yeah, I do think Simo will keep Sam Lavelle in there. And to be fair, he's got, he's got promotion experience from League Two. We got to be Morecambe, of course, via the playoffs, so that that can't go go adrift. But yeah, I think it's a difficult one. It's fifty fifty for me with Sam Lavelle. Up next is Georgie Kelly. Not fifty fifty. That's going to be one hundred percent to keep. Um, again, like I was saying with uh, Harrison Neal and, and Harry Lewis, he's part of this sort of project we've got going on. Um, at at current time of recording, it's been a month and a half since we've signed him. I haven't seen him kick a ball yet. But if he can keep injury free, I do think he will be one of our starting strikers next season. And ho- hopefully that um, lower division of League Two will be, uh, he'll, he'll be able to just fit right in and um, really hit the ground running when he comes in for us but yeah George Kelly 100% to keep Sean Maguire um, contract is up this summer I don't see it being renewed um, in some ways I wouldn't be against it you, you know he, he's a he would be a free transfer if we could lower his wages because what I've heard he's on quite big wages 
for Carlo. But if we could if we could lower his wages, get him a bit cheaper next to a Luke Armstrong in a in a lesser league of like League Two, I don't think it will be the end of the world. But I, I don't see it happening. I, I do think he'll leave on a free transfer. Um well become a free agent when his contract runs out in the summer. Um just hasn't really worked out this season to be honest, which is a shame because he is a very experienced player. You know, he is a good he is a good striker. But he's a confidence player, and we haven't seen that, unfortunately. He hasn't got confidence this season with us. You know, he's been coming off the bench with five minutes to go. Um, He had a run where he started every game, and unfortunately, he just didn't create a lot and has barely scored. I think he's maybe got two or three goals, like league goals. I'm not counting the County Cup goals against White Irvin. That does not count. Um, But yeah, I, I think he'll, he'll leave on a free um, come the summer. Ben Barkley... It, it just for me, he, I don't see him. Uh, I, I just don't see him being part of our League Two side. To be honest, he's he's too injury prone in my opinion. You know, he's he'll, he'll play four games, and then he's injured for three games. He come back, and then he's injured for five games. He'll come back, and then he's injured again. And it's just it can be frustrating to be honest. Um, he does have that bit of versatility that he can play centre back and right back, and we've seen many times. You know, Simo has moved him from centre back to right back in the game. Um but just for me, I'm I'm not thrown on him as a starting centre back. I, I can't really see him coming off the bench either. I would put him in that I, I think it would be a sell. I'm not sure how long his contract is. But yeah for for me Ben Barkley just it, he's not he's not for me to be honest. I, I I just don't really see him being a part of our plans in the next season in League Two. Unlike Josh Vella, um again he, he's well he's got a year left on his contract and I do think, you know, that is a sign and again a part of this project. I think maybe they sort of I think really they sort of knew towards the end of the January transfer window that we were probably getting relegated and they've signed these players that are good you know, League Two players and lower League One players. I think Josh Vella will be um, very good next season. I think Vela, Callum Guy and Harrison Neal is a very nice midfield, um, to be honest. Uh, it's just his disciplinary record. It's a bit of an issue because he does like to get a silly yellow card here and there. And another man that is 100% nailed on, it is, it is Luke Armstrong. There's absolutely no chance Luke Armstrong isn't to keep. Um, I, I would love him. You know, he's, he's shown over the last few weeks that he knows where the goal is. You know, it was a great goal against... Um, Barnsley the other night it was a great finish from him to keep the composure there and he is looking like a handful I think he works better when there's a player next to him for sure uh, whether that would be like a Jack Diamond or a Georgie Kelly but for me yeah Luke Armstrong 100% keep no arguments there uh, John Mellish as well to be fair I would um, have John Mellish in the keep category uh, I think he does bring that versatility uh, you know he can play in midfield he can play as a centre back I know not a lot of people like him in one or the other. To be fair, you can play a strike as well, really. You've seen that before, haven't you? But yeah, for me, John Mellish is in the keep section. You know, he gives, he, he does give it his all, really. You know, he, he just, he runs, he runs and he runs and he never seems to get tired and that energy is is vital, especially in a, in a League 2 side. We've seen it before. The, he's a very good League 2 player. He contributes with goals every now and then as well. So for me, John Mellish is a keep. Next up, we've got Dan Butterworth, and we're keeping up the keep category. Um, Dan Butterworth, I think, will be a good League 2 player. I think he has shown glimpses of a very good player um, this year in League 1. I just don't think he's got the... Um, he just hasn't had the final product at times. Uh, but then at other times he has. For me, again, yeah, I think he will be a keep. I think he will be a really good addition next to a Luke Armstrong, to be honest, you know, big and small, working off each other. Dan Butworth's got the pace. He's not afraid to go forward. He's always looking to, to get that forward run. Um, he's positive in that in that aspect of his game, the way that he does move forward. He does uh, want to take the game to the opposition. So for me, yeah, Dan Butworth's a keep. It wouldn't surprise me if some people do have him in the sell option, but for me, I, you know, he's under contract. Uh, and I would keep him, to be fair. Josh Emmanuel is someone I wouldn't keep, to be honest. Um... I just I haven't been overly impressed to be fair. He he doesn't have the pace that other wing backs have in the club. When he goes forward, he'll do fifteen step overs, then lose the ball. 
Um, defensively, he's all right. He's he's nothing special. He's out of contract. Um, it was only a, a one year contract, so I don't see that being um extended past the summer. If I'm going to be perfectly honest, so I there uh, have, I I have um yeah I I have Josh Emmanuel in the um sell slash release section there next up is sean grennan hasn't really been given an opportunity uh i'd send him back to crystal palace um it, it just doesn't seem to really have worked out he hasn't really came in and done much uh for the club so yeah i'd return him to his parent club taylor charters and i'm going to stick jack ellison at the same time because i can do two birds one stone here two youth players they're improving uh they're improving under paul simpson and i i think that both of them are a keep um, if I was if I was gonna argue it, I'd say Jack Ellis maybe into the loan section. But I think Taylor Charles and Jack Ellis are two players that will definitely be in and around the first team next season. It wouldn't surprise me if Taylor Charles could be a starter next season. I do like him going forward in the team. I think he brings um a bit of power, um, and you know young energy into the team. J- Jack Ellis, I don't think he's had the best campaign in League One. Um, but we've seen last year as a League 2 player, he can absolutely cut it in League 2, um, and with that more experience he's going to keep getting by playing games, for me, yeah, Jack Ellis is in that keep section for me. Uh, Dylan McGeoch is a difficult one, um, it, it, it's one of these, isn't it, it's keep or it, 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 it's sell, if we, if we were going back five, if we were going back five weeks, it'd be down here, if we're going off the last five weeks, he's in keep, um, I think he's he's a good player. I think I think he should have been given the chance a lot earlier in this Carlisle United team. Uh, for me, he's gonna go in that keep section. Um, you know the midfield we've got there. We've got Callum Guy. We've got Josh Feller, Harrison Neil, Dylan McGeoch. There's some good options there. And, you know if you wanted to switch up Josh Feller and Dylan McGeoch, two very good options to have in League Two. You know he, he brings a lot of experience. He's a leader, and um, and. He's looked like he's balanced out the midfield when he's played for us in League One this season. So, for, yeah, I'm going to put Dylan McGee up and keep, to be perfectly honest. Um, up next, we've got Kai Nugent. I'm going low and out section. Sort of same reasons as Max Kilby, to be honest. Um, then we've got Corey Whelan. Uh, Corey Whelan, for me, I think I think he's done the Carlisle United. His contract is up in the summer. And, you know, the fact that we didn't register him for the second half of the season really shows me that... I I think that that relationship's gone between manager and player and player and club. Um, I've always liked Corey Willen, to be fair. I think um, he, he's always given consistent performance. Um, you know you know what you're expecting from him. He's never going to put in a 10 out of 10, but he'd never really drop below a 6 or a 7, to be fair. Um, he was always very consistent. Uh, he, he, re- he rejected a few offers, didn't he, to stay at Carlisle United? You know, was it, was it uh, Colchester, I believe it was? But I think come the summer he will get a move elsewhere into another League Two team, uh, potentially Colchester come back in for me. I'm not sure, but yeah, I do think that will be a release slash free agent role there for Corey Wheel. And next up we got JJ Kayode. Um, it's it's a, it's a, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because we know what Kayode is all about, but the loan deal just has not worked at all. Um, you know, he's he's played maybe three games for us in in the year loan deal. We were all really excited when he came in on deadline day. Like, oh, that's a really good play to be getting in, and we just haven't seen him at all. It's recurring injuries again, and um, so for me, I'd return him to Rotherham. To be honest, um, I don't think we have much to gain from signing him if he's just going to continue with the injury form that he's in, um. Yeah, I I think injury is unfortunately there, and it would be a return to his parent club. Now I've got three names left, and the three names that I are, I'm actually finding quite difficult to be perfectly honest. Uh, first up, we've got Finn Back. Now, for me, I like Finn Back. I think Finn Back is a good football player. I think we've seen it that he is, you know, he he can defend at, at a level that is good enough at League Two, and he can go forward with the ball as well he's young but the injuries is a big issue of course they are however i believe his contract with forest is up come the summer now if forest don't keep him on and release him i think it would be a good idea to sign him on a free transfer if you get him on a year deal and the injuries persist then after the year 
you say, you know, it hasn't really worked out, good luck. If it does work out, you've just got a good play on the free transfer. So, yeah, I think Finn back uh, 100% should be... Um, no, I'm not going to say 100%. 60 40 to be fair with Finn back. I, I think if he is if he is a free transfer and he's there, give him the opportunity. If not, you don't. And I, I wouldn't give him a lengthy contract, give him a short one. And then if he accepts, then it's in your hands. If if it works out, happy days. If he, if the injuries continue, you cut your ties. That's for me. Um we've got two names left. We, we've got we've got Terry Ablade now. I'm going to put him in return to Perven Club, but I wouldn't mind seeing him next season in League Two. And the reason for that is his pace. He's lightning quick. Man, he is quick. Um, and you need that. You seen him with Amari Patrick last year in League Two when we had Dennis and that up front. We didn't have a lot of pace. Amari Patrick was the injection of pace. Terry Ablade could be that player. Unfortunately, I don't think you can risk it with the injuries. I'm kind of contradicting myself there between Finn Back and Terry Ablade. Of course I am. But I, I just think the injuries might be too much um, to try and get him on loan again, especially if we're paying his wages and stuff. So, yeah, for me, Terry Ablade returned to Fulham, but I wouldn't be against getting him in on loan for another season. And next up's the big one. It's Paul Huntington. Um, is he keep? Is he in this one? I I'm really really torn to be honest. I'm really torn between these two. Um, obviously you've apparently got the um, the you've you, you've got the thing in his contract of if he played so many games, then he he gets a contract extension, which is why he wasn't playing. I I'm struggling with where to pull him to be honest. Um. I'm struggling. I am. I'm going to put him in keep. I think his experience in his leadership is something that he can bring to the club. He can have the club that would be a... a uh, what, am I, what am I trying to say? I think his experience is second to none. He's probably the most experienced on that page. I think his experience would really benefit Carlisle United and the young players. But do I see him starting? I don't. I, I don't think he's got the legs for it, to be honest. Um, you know, there's times this season where it, the pace has really caught him out. You know, I'm thinking of Aziz for Reading, just paced him, burned him. Um, but that experience does, and, it, you know... He's one of them that I could see coming in as a coach as well one day. You know, you know, he's he's from Carlisle, could become the coach of Carlisle, and he's coaching badges and stuff. But I'm I'm torn with with Hutton Stone. Get me wrong, I do think it's either a keep or it's a release. I think it's one or the other. Um, and don't get me wrong, if you screenshot this with no context, then I I I could get absolutely grilled for some of the choices I've made here, but that's what I'm going to go with. That's what I'm going to go with in the end there. Now, as I record, this is the 18th of March, so a lot's going to happen between now and the end of the season. Um, You know, I don't know what the structure's going to be for the summer window. It could be a full rebuild where we sign ridiculous amount of players it could be we only sign four or five players um in key positions i i honestly don't know but for me that's what i'm going with so return to their parent club we've got jockel anderson sean grennan jj coyote and terry ablade in the release slash sell slash free agent section i've got corey wheeling josh emmanuel ben barkley sean mcguire jordan gibson thomas holly and Jaden harris in the loan out, we've got the three Cumbrian lads there, Max Kilby, Kai Nugent and Gay Breeze. Players I'd like to see sign from their loan deal is Jack Diamond and Finn Back. And then in the keep section, I've got Paul Simpson, if the form can pick up. I've got Harrison Neal, Afi McCarmel, Jack Robinson, Harry Lewis, Jack Armour, Callum Guy, Sam Lavelle, George Kelly, Josh Vella, Luke Armstrong, John Mellish, Dan Butterworth, Taylor Charters, 
Jack Ellis, Dylan McGeoch, and Paul Huntington. Any names that surprise you in there? What are you thinking? Let me know in them comments down below. I would love to interact with you guys on this one and have a bit of debate about who you would put where. Whom, whom I think is going to upset a few people in here. I think Hunts and Sam Lavelle could be a couple of talking points. Uh, Jordan Gibson will be a talking point for sure. Uh, McCalmont and Robinson could be a bit of a talking point. Would you maybe put Jack Ellis there in a loan deal? Not sure. But let's have that let's have that discussion in them comments down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's a longer one than normal um, and everything. And there's been a lot of talking from myself. But... Thank you so much for watching. If you are new here, follow my socials at CUO for you underscore YouTube. That is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, very active on Instagram. Uh, you know, I've, I've talked to quite a lot of you guys on Instagram. We, we always have polls and stuff. There's, there's some giveaways on Instagram now and then as well. So, you know, stay tuned on Instagram for sure. And if you're new on YouTube, why not consider giving me a like and a subscribe. Thank you so much for 1,350 subscribers. Absolutely incredible number and something that it's mental to me that there's that many of you here and subscribe to the channel. But thank you so much for watching. I've been CUO4 and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,